Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a video about makeup and only makeup. Some of you have said that you've enjoyed my little dipping my toes into makeup and hair and beauty and all that stuff. And for a long time, I was hugely obsessed with makeup and makeup tools and all sorts of beauty products. I think over the past couple years or so, I've really reined in buying makeup. I'm just trying to enjoy my collection. I've pared it down because for me, I'm not as sentimental about makeup products as I am about perfume. You guys know, or if you don't and you haven't been watching my channel, I've kept every single bottle of perfume I've ever owned. But with makeup, if I go through it, I obviously throw it out. I recycle it. I will pass things off to family and friends and just, you know, throw things out throughout the years. So I'm much less sentimental about it. I also have gotten kind of over my huge obsession with trying to get every new palette or every new lip product that I was definitely in for a while. So what I thought would be fun is if I showed you kind of my top six palettes that really made an impression on me throughout the years, buying a bunch of makeup palettes. Eyeshadow palettes are probably my favorite makeup item. Um, I went through a huge palette phase and palettes, the eyeshadow palettes are, is the item that I think I've kept the most of throughout the years and kind of been more sentimental about some of them. So even though I don't use uh, one of them, you'll see, I just haven't been able to let it go. And maybe I'll swatch like my favorite shade or two shades from each palette as well. And if you guys have these palettes, maybe that'll inspire you to kind of shop your own stash. I've been really into shopping my own stash for... Uh, my makeup. So let's get into it. One that I really really loved and one of the few eyeshadow palettes that I actually bought from Sephora um, because a lot of the time I'll get my makeup from Marshalls or Winners. I love kind of hunting there especially the limited edition or like the fun new collections that brands come out with. I feel like often find their way pretty quickly to Marshalls and Winners and TJ Maxx but there are some items that will just either go on sale or that I love so much and I'll pick up from Sephora full price. So this one actually went on sale at Sephora, but it's still being sold and it's Born to Run by Urban Decay. I really didn't like the packaging on this, but I liked that it was magnetic. I love the mirror on this because oftentimes, not oftentimes, but there are definitely mirrors for eyeshadow palettes where I feel like it's kind of like a circus mirror type thing where it's you just don't really see yourself that clearly you don't end up using it or it's too small to be practical this is a very much a usable makeup palette and it's very clear and the colors on this I really liked what I enjoyed the most I think were that there were a lot of great uh, base shades kind of like lid shades that were fun and interesting and even though they dabbled in colors like there's blue and greens there's orange there's kind of like pinky purples um they're all really wearable even though it's not just like a pure neutral just like browns and beige palette they're wearable um colors so i would say my favorite shade i really love gold bronze kind of like orangey warm brown shades and I know those are a favorite for most people and it tends to be kind of the safest pick, but I really love goldy bronze um, shades. So I think my favorite that I've used is probably either Stranded or Ignite. And I can swatch them here on my arm. Stranded is more of a warm gold and then Ignite is more of like a uh, bronze. It's got a lot more orange in there. But yeah, a lot of people love this palette. I'm not sure if people are still really using it because as I say, I kind of fallen out of the whole makeup game for a while there. And by the way, you guys, I use my palettes. These are not just for show. You're gonna see they're gonna be dirty. I mean, they're gonna be a little bit dusty and that's because I really do use them. I mean, every day I'm using them and especially these ones that have like a material that's a little bit like the NARS packaging, you use it once and it's like already destroyed. So yeah, I really love this and I still use this palette quite often. And yeah, I think it was a great release from Urban Decay. Then another palette I immediately knew I'd loved when I saw it. And I did end up also getting this from Sephora, I think, but again, when it went on sale on Sephora. 
And this is Sweet Peach by Too Faced. I love the entire Sweet Peach range. I have had many of their products. I love the smell. I love artificial peach scented things. And I love their lip glosses, which I have a number of. And this palette, you guys, it's my favorite one from the Sweet Peach line. Again, a lot of warm brown shades, a lot of, if it is gonna dabble into colors, they're extremely wearable. And honestly, my favorite two shades are Bellini and Puree. Bellini is like a dusty pink and it's definitely got like a sheen shimmer to it. Um, not glittery, but it's definitely got a sheen. And then Puree is a beautiful matte, a great transition shade. And I love it. I find that a lot of palettes have a black and I know that so many beauty gurus, yeah, those are swatch right there. So many gurus will complain or they hate when a palette doesn't have a black. But personally, I just have so many palettes and I feel like most of us have a lot of palettes. So as long as you really have like one or two blacks that you like, I don't really go through black. So I personally would prefer if palettes didn't always have a black in them and just had, you know, saved this space for another color, but maybe that's just me. See, the mirror in this is nowhere as good as the mirror in Urban Decay's Born to Run. This is more, yeah, it's a little bit more just like a design, but I love it. And yeah, that's one I absolutely love. Then another one I bought from Sephora, this one full price because I just adore this palette and this brand in general. If I had to choose one brand, like one house that I love above all, it would be Dior. I love Dior fashion, I love Dior you know, clothing, their bags, their jewelry, their perfume, their makeup, I just love Dior. And if like everyone had to pick one brand, I, ever since I was little, I can't even really describe it. I mean, maybe because I spoke French since I was little and I was always in French school, it was gonna be a French brand, I have no idea, but Dior above everything, I adore. And their five pan shadow like palettes, I've always loved. And this one isn't sold anymore. And honestly, I think it's the best one and I don't know why they took it away, but it's Queer Canage and it's, what's the number, 796. I have loved this for so long. This was, I think like, I don't know, either Christmas or birthday gift or some gift to myself because I just loved it. And throughout the years, I I know it seems like a very simple, neutral palette and it is but even Lisa Eldridge queen of makeup said that she did test on I don't know like a hundred eyeshadows and different companies and different formulations and Dior came up on top so if Lisa says it then it must be true I love this I love the middle shade this again transition brown is beautiful and then this kind of shimmery brown they're very wearable they're very blendable I adore them and I'm so happy to have picked this up because this has kind of become like a cult favorite for people ever since uh, they stopped selling it. There's still a million and one of these uh, five pan shadows, but this is my favorite. Then one that's inc incredibly sentimental for me, but I don't really wear anymore because I'm pretty sure it's, it must be discontinued. I mean, it still wears the same and it doesn't smell weird or look weird, but it's just been so many years that I don't wear it. But this is one of the sentimental eyeshadows palettes that I can't let go of yet and this is Stila in the light this is a palette that when it came out I remember I was obsessed with it and I didn't buy it and then it was one of those cases where I found it's like still being sold at Sephora and I found it at that time at a Marshalls and it was so inexpensive it must have been marked wrong and I don't know that like rush of finding something on a deal when you know it's so it's worth so much more in that moment I've just never forgotten it so this one the mirror is incredibly dirty um, but it's actually a pretty good mirror and the shades you guys again it just seems like a very neutral brown nude palette and it is but it had two cult favorite shadows in it it has kitten which is like the number one steel shade and bubbly which I low-key preferred because it, it's more gold kitten is a lot more kind of like a light pink dusty pink and bubbly is more gold but they're both just beautiful, shimmery, great lid shades. I feel like both of these are kind of eyeshadows that I like to wear on the lid even with nothing or maybe like a very soft transition shade. And it even had like two soft transition shades that I loved, um, Bliss and Sunset. So 
Yeah, it was really, really nice. I got some really great wear out of this palette. Again, I don't feel like I feel incredibly comfortable to wear it now. I'm sure it's fine, but I mean, years wise, I should probably just throw this out, but I'm gonna keep it a little longer, sentimentally. And then the last two are actually both from Lorac, and this was very sentimental for me, and I'm sure for many Canadians because these were being sold at Ulta and obviously on Lorac's website and they just, I don't know if you guys were into the beauty community when the Lorac Pro, the first one came out and then when the Mega Pros were coming out, everyone was talking about them. They were such a big, uh, I don't know, cult classics for so many beauty YouTubers and they were sold out like this and we don't have an Ulta. We don't have Ulta in Canada. I've heard it's coming though. Uh, it was before all this virus stuff, so I don't know if that's really gonna happen anymore, but I heard it was on its way last year, so we'll see if that ever happens. But these, I could not find them, and there were just so, I must have watched hundreds of tutorials and reviews on the Low Rack Pro. And then I made my way to, I think it was in San Francisco where I picked this up. You guys, again, it's disgustingly dirty. But, and it just seems like a normal palette now, but I can't express to you the excitement I had in finding this and wearing this. All of them have dips in them, which is so, so big for someone like me because I really never hit pan. And again, my two favorite shades were kind of like this. It's called Taupe and Gold. Lorac doesn't get creative with uh, their shadow names. And again, Taupe was like a really nice transition shade and the gold in this, they're so soft. It was such a rich, gold um, that pulled very warm and again because I have brown eyes I know they say these kinds of shades are great for blue eyes and I'm sure they are but because I have brown eyes I find that when I wear warmer shadows they really bring out like the warmer honeyer tones to my eyes and yeah I just like them so that very sentimental I love this I was so happy to finally travel somewhere where there was an Ulta and pick it up and by that same logic when the pros started coming out the mega pros didn't get number one and wasn't in the states enough to pick that up and then i think there's there's been four i think but anyways i made it to san diego this time in time for mega pro 2 and i picked this up and these of course are have just kind of like double the size of the mirror and double the amount of shadows so now there's two matte rows and two shimmer rows and uh, I'm sure you guys know, but the regular ones have one matte and one shimmer. So these, these ones, again, very wearable, very nice. I find that I wore olivine and gold leaf the most, or at least I liked them the most. There were definitely a lot of mattes that I wore, but olivine was more of like a silvery olive green, and then gold leaf was very much like a yellowy gold compared to the other gold shade, which um, was a lot more orange. But again, loved this. This one has a little bit less of a dip and honestly, I feel like I need to bring this out and play with it again because I wore it for a long time and then just kind of forgot about it and moved on to the next. But this was a palette again that I was so, so obsessed with. And the next time I go to the States, I definitely always, um, or I definitely want to check out some more Lorac because I really enjoyed the two or three palettes that I've gotten with them over the past couple years. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video. Let me know if you do in the comments and I can carry on filming videos of like top six or makeup videos that I'm interested in or hair or beauty. And yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.